Clock Shark is the first of the three time tracking apps I'm reviewing here. Clock Shark, as I mentioned, the write up is kind of a newer kid on the block. They're not brand new, they've been around for a bit. Um, but they're newer to me, let's put it that way. I, I've, I've, I learned about them uh, just last year. Uh, Cliff, who's one of the co founders, uh, was on my email list, and he, I often invite people to reply to my emails, and he replied one time, and we struck up a conversation, and I noticed in his signature that they had a timekeeping app, and I got curious and went and checked it out, and next thing you know, I'm getting into his app and learning about it and saying, wow, this is actually really good. So I want to show you, I don't want you to take my word for it, what this looks like. Let's have a look at my screen. We're going to review Clock Shark. We're going to look at the integration, the interface. We're going to look at clocking in and out, which you can do both on a mobile app and your browser. Uh, we're going to look at the setup process, which kind of goes back to the integration and interface a little bit. We're going to look at their scheduling app, and we're going to look at their support. And that should give us a wrap up on how we're looking at Clock Shark, so that after having seen all that, you can decide if Clock Shark may be right for you. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, over here on my screen, you're actually seeing the calendar. Let's go over to my time clock and let's actually start with the uh, mobile app. Let me bring that up on my screen. So as you can see, it's real simple. All I have to do is with my finger, normally, of course, I would click right here or tap right here where it says clock in. But first we have to choose the job and the task, right? So let's choose my job, world domination. And uh, we'll do the, t uh, the task of uh, media, right? And then I'm going to tap clock in. And we're on the clock, right? Pretty simple, clear as mud. Notice there's also a switch option and also a lunch option, right? So I can clock out for lunch and clock back in. And if I need to switch from one job to another very quickly, this comes up a lot, actually. Um, I have the switch option right there. Very, very easy to do. Uh, one thing that's important to know is if you go over here into the web app now and go to your time clock, um, it's not sort of synced up with the mobile app. So even as I refresh my page, no, I take that back. It is synced up if you clock in on the mobile app. I think if you clock in, and we'll test this in a minute, if you clock in on the website, it won't show up on the mobile app. So it works one way, not the other. Uh, I was not aware of that. I thought it actually didn't work. Either way, but that's good to know. At least if I clock in on my mobile, it shows up right here on the website. So, uh, as uh, the other thing you'll be um, interested in knowing is while you're here and talking about clocking in and clocking out, you can go into the web app and you can see who's working now. And it gives you, based on GPS tracking, it's going to show you exactly where I am in beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And it says, I clocked in a minute ago, I'm working on world domination, and I'm working on the task called media. That is really what I can show you on clocking in and clocking out. So let's, let's clock out on the, web, on the uh, mobile. Okay, back on the mobile app, I'll clock out. And I'm sure that I'm clocked out. And now let's go back to the web. We'll go to my time clock. Okay, it shows I'm clocked out now, so let's select a job. We'll go to world domination. And we'll do media again. This is clocking in from the web. Just so I can tell the difference when I look at the details. I say clock in, so when you clock in from the web, which you just saw how to do, very easy to do, if I switch back over to my mobile, notice there's no, it doesn't reflect that. So it works one way, not the other. And of course, I, you know, I test it out every way. So I go out of the screen and back in just to see if maybe then it updates. And it doesn't. And I ultimately confirmed it with my friend Cliff from Clock Shark that uh, that's something they're going to probably have fixed pretty soon. But it's uh, as of right now, if you clock in from the website, it will not show you that on the mobile app. So if anything, Air on the side of clocking in on the mobile app, always oh, probably the best place to clock in from. Anyway, and that way you know that it's kind of updating in both places. That, my friends, is it. That's clocking in and clocking out. Uh, the rest of it is really straightforward. I'm not going to bore you with showing you how that all works. Now, let's take a look at setup. So everything setup-wise is going to be here in admin. Let's start with QuickBooks, right, because that also gets us into the integration. So we integrate with QuickBooks. Um, 
you can log into QuickBooks right from here, which is kind of a cool little added thing that they don't need to do, but it's nice that they did. Um, of course, you can view your sync logs, and if I hadn't been connected, the option here, instead of saying disconnect your company, would say to connect your company, right? So again, real simple uh, integration with QuickBooks. I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think it also integrates with Zero, and it definitely integrates with desktop. In fact, the uh, desktop integration is much more robust, from what I understand, than the QuickBooks online integration for the main reason that most construction companies are still using a desktop product at this point. Um, but they're definitely putting a lot of resources into QuickBooks Online because everybody knows that's where the future lies. Um, once you've got the uh, accounting software connected, you'll want it to sync up, obviously. And then you'll want to get into, you can look at the, the mappings, right? So you'll look, uh, I'll look, for example, at view it and edit existing mappings. And this will show me first customers, then employees, and then vendors, right? And I can go into each, and I can go into, I can take one of these mappings. For example, here's my, one of my uh, customers. I can edit this. And, you know, change the options here. The default billable status, let's say, is uh, billable, right? And I can put in my hourly rate, and I can say update mapping, it's required, so let's just say it's uh, 250 an hour, right? Update mapping, and that's done. So that's how you would configure existing mappings. One of the nice things about ClockShark also is that I can add things from either side. In other words, I can add a new customer here in ClockShark, and I can get it to sync from ClockShark back to QuickBooks. What I would do is here under settings, I would change this and say auto map from ClockShark to QuickBooks and then save that setting. The other thing is once I uh, have created a new list element, I always want to go right here to create new mappings. That way I tell ClockShark exactly how to map that thing. So uh, there's nothing to do in customers. I'll click next. Over here we've got on ClockShark these sample jobs. So it wants to know do I want to export these to QuickBooks, and if so, if I choose this, it's going to want to know which QuickBooks job, and if it knows that there aren't any other QuickBooks jobs that aren't already mapped, then it's only going to give me the one choice that you see here, which is it's going to create a new QuickBooks job the next time I do that. I don't want to do that because I don't want sample jobs in my QuickBooks file, so we're going to just skip right past that one. And here we would have employees, and here we would have vendors, and here I do have a bunch of vendors that aren't in here. So let's scroll all the way down. I don't necessarily want to map these. And then we've got our service items, right? There's nothing new here. So remember, this is only going to show you stuff if there's new things that haven't already been mapped here, tasks. And then, of course, it's going to have you review and finalize everything. And then I'll click Done. Now, if we want to add any of those things, then we should go through this. So let's go to Admin, and we'll go to Jobs. Right, this is pretty clear, so I just click Add Job. I can add it from here, right? And then once I've added the job, what I want to do is back to the QuickBooks integration, and I'm a little too fast with my mouse here, change it so that we auto map from ClockShark to QuickBooks, and ClockShark will update every hour or so. So it updates about every hour. Uh, there's no Sync Now button, so you basically set it to go from ClockShark to QuickBooks, click Save Settings, <clears throat> you'll go in and create new mappings and update for whatever thing you've just added, whether it's a new job or a new task. All right, so these are, these are linked to your products and services list in QuickBooks Online or your items list in QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, let's go to employees, of course. Uh, employees are really easy and straightforward here, and I, lo I love that I can add them from here and, of course, map them to QuickBooks. And, of course, if I add somebody new in QuickBooks, who's, let's say, a vendor, I can come in and map them here, you know, to an employee so that it's clear this is somebody I want to be able to track time for. It's really, really easy to, uh, to do. When you go to create new mappings, that's where you'll find them in the vendors and you'll map them to a new employee, basically, is uh, how that works. Um, what else? Let's go to, now we have departments and locations. Now, don't get confused because QuickBooks Online has location tracking as well as classes. These are different. So this is where you can actually group employees uh, by department. So I've created an executive department, which, for example, includes Erica and myself, right? So we're the executive. 
we don't have any other people that work for us right now. Um, we have one subcontractor who you might have seen in the previous screen. And that's it. So if I wanted to, I could create a department called subcontractors. I'll just call it subs. And I would just choose Suchi and add her into the subs department, right? So it's just a way of grouping employees, which, by the way, comes in really handy when we get to scheduling, which we're going to look at in just a second. Next, we have locations, right? So I can set up different locations. This is especially useful considering that we're dealing a lot with construction companies and software like this, where we might want to have different job locations to describe, although that would probably be found in the jobs. But still, you can use locations to track uh, you know, uh, well, locations, funny how that works, um, in a different way if you needed to, as opposed to the way you do it with your jobs. Um, so, let's take a look at the scheduling, because that's next and almost last. So, scheduling, really, really easy to do, and I love they have recurring features, so if I want to add a shift, it's really easy, and I can choose repeat. This is huge to me, because if I know I'm going to have somebody working on the same project all week, this saves me a lot of time. The other thing that I love about this is notify employees. So I can click this and I can choose to notify all employees whose schedules have been updated today in the last three days or in the last week and I can push it via mobile and or email. So notice I've got them both checked off. I like to harass my people to make absolutely certain that they got the memo. I want to make sure they got the memo. And then last but not least, let's talk about support. Support, we have chat support. This was amazing. I was in here on a Saturday not long ago asking questions because I was going through doing my research for this very video. And, uh, and I got my questions answered on a Saturday, no less, right through the, uh, the chat here. Uh, so this is great. I love these chat supports. I'll be honest, I hate searching through knowledge databases, knowledge bases on websites because all too often I just can't find what I'm looking for because there's so much information there and I want something very specific and I can't find it. I can't find what I'm looking for. So the support options are really important to me and having that chat support available is huge plus the fact that they, they have somebody you know sort of stationed on the chat over the weekends is great. It's huge. And uh, the other thing I like about a company like Clockshark is they're kind of new, they're young, they're hungry, these guys are hustling and these guys want your business. So if you're considering a, a time tracking app for, for, you know, from the get-go or you're thinking about switching from something else that you're using and especially if you're looking for something that integrates with QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online, then uh, this is definitely something worth considering in my opinion. Uh, read the write-up as always. You'll get more, even more information than what you've just seen here in the video. And um, I think that's about all I can tell you for now about Clockshot. I can tell you a lot more, but I'd need a whole hour. So that, my friends, is all I'm going to go over for now on my review of Clockshark as one of three time tracking apps that I'm reviewing here on the Fundira Ledger. As always, I hope you learned something and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Ooh, I better clock out.